All right, in this example, we're going to do kind of a one-two punch. We're going to do the guitar reamp setup where I have the clear mountain phases in the chain before the amp because I want that stomp box style flanger getting, you know, a little dirtied up by the amp. And then we're going to run a stereo mm. version of it on the way back to use uh, a, a different BBD chip that gives us access to longer delay line. And then I can spread that and use it as a stereo spreader after the fact, so I can use this in, in two different stages in, in the chain. It's interesting for me because the way I like to use these modulation effects is to spread, so I use choruses to spread, and I've just found that that's a really good musical way to do that rather than just using your traditional stereo spreader that you and would find. It's a great point that you bring up the chorus because really the difference between a flanger and chorus is a threshold of time, and having access to different delay lengths in, uh, in phases here gives that ability to go beyond a flanger and get into some of that yeah. chorus territory where for me that's you know everybody's a little different for me that's where it gets to about 15 milliseconds maybe 20 milliseconds where it sounds less like comb filtering and more like a second voice and we add the modulation to that and it gets that you know kind of syrupy lush chorus sound yeah so we'll do we'll grab the guitar track the line a linear line pretty indicative of that time yeah. and then on playback We'll add in the chorus and maybe uh, uh, some other effects to give it a little bit extra. That's good. Uh, flavor. All right, so let's kick that in. You can already hear it uh, yeah, swirling there. It's heavily, a pretty yeah. aggressive, uh, pretty aggressive flanger. Let's do something like a. What I love about it is you can hear the the guitar instrument feedback kind of almost being um, created from the plugin as well as you kind of yeah it's all, it's all that like weird kind of resonant frequencies that kind of all start to right, yeah. muddle together. So now let's go to this stereo version. Let's go. I have a bus already set up here where I'm sending the uh, guitar amp mics to uh, a stereo bus. I'm gonna put on a different instance of the flanger. And this is what I was talking about where we're going to add a little extra delay time. So in here you have the MN series of chips. The first ones came out in the early 70s, but they, they kind of developed over time to give more and more uh, stages so you can get more and more delay time. And these were popular in the JC120 mm. uh, Roland Jazz Chorus. Yeah. Uh, you had them in some of the rack flangers. And, and choruses. So we're going to use that and on here that gives us access. Now you see we can get up to, you know, 19, 20, even 55 milliseconds. Yeah, so you're right. way out of, you're out of flanger territory. You're now into chorus and even doubling. So yeah. I'm going to maybe start around 20 milliseconds. I've got this with um, a very slow sweep. I've got it even very light depth because I just kind of want some light movement. I don't want a deep kind of, you know, otherworldly effect yeah I, right. I just want this to spread and have some movement but i am going to use they uh they've included an, uh, a phase flip for a left and right so i'm going to do a 180 degree phase flip so you really get an exaggerated stereo spread mm. and i'm going to duck it down underneath the uh signal i guess about 12 db and just you know kind of have that underneath just to you know we'll put the line in the center and then just kind of hug it on the outside so let's just play that back right so it's it's pretty neat like it's it's not a super clean and pristine spread but in something like that's it you know it's kind of have a, light, a little bit of that dirty character I kind of like that, that, you know, vintage feel. And if you, I mean, we're lucky enough today to not be completely in the box. We've got our amps firing and everything. If you are in the box, something like this is really useful because it just adds a little bit of character and a little bit of movement, a little bit, although we are, make, it is predictable because we're choosing the parameters, it does, for the listener, give a bit more of an unpredictability to the sound that's being pushed out of them, I think. Exactly, and it just gives you more and more character.